every weekend uh, we head you into the, the the Friday into the Saturday. Although some of you will get this special edition podcast on Saturday, it's the only special edition podcast we release all week, and for good reason because you love it, real talkers. It's a chance for you to blow off a little steam and say what needs to be said to thousands of people. It's proudly presented by Local Environmental Services. It's a tradition we call Trash Talk. All right, this one from Michael, who says, Ryan, last week you had the federal environment minister on the show, Stephen Gilbo. Uh, it's baffled me for a while, but how can the government of Canada not realize that it can't be an all or nothing approach? It's all about striking the correct balance. If everything goes electric, do we have the infrastructure to handle the demands? Or will it be like places like California, where they're asking people to limit or not even use electricity at all during certain times? And Michael's right about that. He says also, how is it the government doesn't see that unless the American Americans, China, and India get on board to cut emissions. It doesn't have an impact what Canada does. We are a microscopic polluter on the global climate. I'm all for companies getting more energy efficient and striving to help the planet. But unless the big three start getting serious, we don't need to kill our main economic engine in Alberta being the oil and gas industry. And then Michael very politely says, thank you for your time. Well, Michael, thank you for your email. How about this one from Cindy who says, Jespo, I can't believe I missed your live conversation with Matt Lemmers, the cannabis journalist earlier this week. She says, it's probably best I missed it live as I would have blown my personal feminist gasket on the live chat. So Cindy goes on to send us an email. She listened to it later. She says, here's my thoughts on the failing cannabis industry. She says, Ryan, I appreciated what you and Matt had to say, but the other elephants in the room were and still are terrible business practices by smooth talkers that have fallen upward. They've failed up and they have absolutely no skill in the cannabis space. A lot of cannabis companies don't even have an HR department or there's an unqualified person running the show. C-suites and boards across the industry are hired on cronyism, excluding skilled and educated women and minorities. If you're not a blue or white collared bro, you have a very little chance to participate in the inner circle. There's CFOs with no accounting experience, bookkeepers with no controller roles, a CMO who doesn't know the first thing about marketing, cannabis advertising or branding, COOs, chief operating officers with no ag experience, no manufacturing experience, CEOs out of mining from non-existent operations in Nicaragua, giant salaries that are never based on revenue targets. Look in a cannabis company's parking lot in year one and you've got $100,000 trucks, cars, boats in year one. She says many of these companies going under deserve to go under and the overregulation should not be blamed for everything. She says pharmaceuticals is highly regulated and this is a pharmaceutical product whether we like it or not. And don't get me started, says Cindy, on the sexual harassment, the cover-ups and the blackballing of women that speak out. She says thanks to the two of you for what you do. Hey, thank you, Cindy. We sure appreciate that email. What about this one from Mike? I love emails that start like this, Johnny. Mike starts, I don't want to be a dick, but... (laughs) But I will. Can you please ask why everybody's being so alarmist about Bill C-18 and the loss of news access on specific social media platforms? Like, do these alarmists not know how, like, bookmarks or URLs work? It's not like they won't be able to access the content. They just won't get it through platforms that are largely already phasing out that content or are gamifying it to polarize positions through content selection algorithms. Mike's on to something. He says it seems like the lack of access issues getting blown way out of proportion. Don't get me wrong. I think the bill is badly designed and I think that it only seeks to serve legacy media, but this seems like the wrong way to get people concerned about the state of media or social media in Canada. He says I would love for less alarmism and more real talk in our media. So thanks to this show for that. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. And this from Trevor. Trevor says, I'm absolutely sickened by Alberta's Premier and the Housing Minister Nixon's negligence and failure to address the housing emergency. Says it was a chilly night in Edmonton earlier in July. And let me tell you what I saw by walking past an encampment. People sleeping in garbage bags, so camouflaged they could have been confused for trash. People burning grass, even their own feces to stay warm. I asked if they needed help. They said, don't tell anybody. They said, please don't tell the police or the provincial sheriffs, or all they'll do is show up and throw our personal belongings in the trash and then fine us for littering and we can't afford that. Trevor says we're in a housing emergency. This is not business as usual. 
Thousands of Albertans are sleeping rough each night, and the Premier thinks the biggest issue is federal intervention. Frankly, we need federal intervention. We need the Army setting up tents, safe sleeping areas, hot meals and showers, and social supports, just as one would do for a refugee crisis abroad. He says this week, this most recent week, the deadliest week ever for drug poisonings in Alberta. How many dead indigenous and homeless people will it take for the premier and the minister to care about the average Albertan? That from Trevor. You can send us an email for Trash Talk to talk at ryanjesperson.com. It's proudly presented week in and week out by local environmental services. Have an amazing weekend, Real Talkers. We'll see you back here live on Monday morning.